Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship for 2015. Yet again for day three, we have another wonderful crowd in the house to witness some more StarCraft II Magic, a fabulous first game to kick off the quarterfinals, I'm sure you'll agree, with Trap versus Fantasy, a terrific matchup. We've got three more games to come, of course, in the quarterfinals, and they'll play out this afternoon. But we also have the semi-finals as well today, and we already know one of our names through the bracket. Time now for our second match of the day. And I am not sure there's a bigger game today in terms of the destiny of the trophy and the destiny of these two men. Our first player has never gone this far in a big tournament before. It is probably the biggest game of his career to date, and he was terrific in the round of 16. He's our last remaining Zerg. Please make some noise for Dark. And with the weight of all Zergs on him, he has a bit of an uphill struggle. The reason being is his opponent. Not only the 2013 WCS Season 2 champion, the last OSL champion in StarCraft 2, but also the only man left in the competition with a 3-0 perfect record from the round of 16. Not only that, he is definitely the best TVZ player on planet Earth right now. Please make some noise for Jin Air Green Wings, Maru! <laughs> Some say that these two players hold the key to the championship in their hands right now. Will it go to one of these two? Will it go to innovation? Let's get the thoughts from our experts with Frodan. Thank you so much, Red Eye. It's time for the round of eight matches between Maru and Dark. This TVZ promises to be one of the most exciting matches we have up today, and I can't wait to get it started. The last Zerg remaining is Dark from SK Telecom T1. Can he go all the way and be the last representative of his race? We turn to our Zerg expert, Liquid Snoot, to start off the discussions. You said Dark was a player that you were really impressed with this play so far. You've become sort of a fanboy of his play. Uh, can you begin the discussion here of what makes him special as a player compared to some other people that you've seen? I think what makes him so special, you know, as a Zerg, it's a little bit tricky to stand out in CBT. Uh, you can do certain things, but only within a certain frame. But Dark is actually one of the few that actually use different compositions, at least the Corruptor style, compared to the Muta style. He's really been the Zerg to bring out some really new, fresh stuff to the, to the CBT metagame, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, he's just incredibly fast, always hits his inject. His macro also is very special to look at. He's not the guy that goes up to six, seven, or eight gases right away like we see life do sometimes and then start massing muters. Mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of a mineral heavy Zerg, and also his creep spread has to be commended. It's, he's so good. Every time you see the turn clearing creep, he's back on the field with three or four queens, just respreading creep again. So he's just a very mechanically strong player, and he also has a very strong understanding of the fundamentals of the macro game and uh, just how to use his attention well when he plays. Because CBT is a very fast-paced matchup, so you really need to focus your attention to Absolutely. places where it uh, counts the most. Yeah, and even with that creep spread, you're even mentioning throughout the series how good he's, he is protecting it, too. Sometimes maybe, you know, is he overprotective or not? We'll see how it goes engaged with uh, Maru coming in as a TVZ pressure player here. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Dark here. Kevin, you actually casted Dark back in NASL Season 4. That was Whoa. a few <laughs> years ago. What's it like seeing his growth from back then all the way till now? Yeah, it's funny because sometimes we see players uh, in a certain phase in their career and it's like, hey, we were there at the start and from there on it was nothing but a never-ending upswing where he just won tournament after tournament. With Dark, that's definitely not the case. We saw him back then in Season 4, this is 2012 that we're talking about, and he looked like a good Zerg, but he wasn't someone who truly stood out. And, you know, that showed as well because 2013 was not exactly known as the year of Dark. Uh, neither was 2014, but obviously, you know, behind the scenes he's been working hard to get better and better, and over the last few months he's been getting a a lot of love from all you know the diehard Zergs out there that will always say like man you know I know life is good and everybody loves life but check out Dark as well you know he does this really well he does that really well uh, overall I do think do not, I do completely agree with Snoot and I don't think that he has something that is like man like only Dark does it like no Dark just does 
what we like to see in this matchup, which makes TVZ such a fun matchup to watch. But he just does it very well, like extremely well even. And that's why I think we can prepare ourselves for an amazing series, because I don't think Maru is very different. Maru is not the guy who like sits in his laboratory like, hmm, I need a special build. Like, no, Maru just executes things and builds a lot of stuff and controls his units extremely well. So I think this may be the most explosive series of the day when it comes to action, big engagements and comeback and non-stop fighting. That's above all. Jeff, agree or disagree? I agree. Um, I think what's interesting about this series for me is that I feel like Dark stands kind of at the precipice where, like, I've seen this so many times. There's a guy who's kind of underrated, having great results yeah. earlier on in the tournament, and everyone's getting really excited about him, but then he hits that brick wall, and he's put down, and we forget about him for months. And I feel like Dark is at that point in time. Maru is the monster. He is the wall. He's the guy he has to get past. If he gets past Maru, yeah. then we enter into the, the realm where people are like, Dark, Dark's one of the best Zergs. Dark can really do it. He almost did it or did do it in Katowice. Like, that's the kind of stuff that starts to happen. But just beating Tasia, that is an amazing accomplishment. But StarCraft II fans, they're fickle fans. If you don't win a tournament or come darn close to it, it's really not good enough. And right now, Dark looked amazing, but this is the monster he has to get past. And Maru, we've heard a lot about his TVZ. We didn't get to see it. We only saw him blank a Protoss quite easily. It was one of the biggest beatdowns we've had, especially yeah. on a stage like this, in a mm -hmm. while. Right. If he does that again to Dark, I feel like Dark is all for naught. Like, all this hype about him and excitement about him just kind of goes away, and his next test happens later down the road. So it's, it's a big match in a lot of ways. But so that's borderline impossible, right? That we are going to see the same thing happen to Dark as what happened to Patient. Patience? Patience? I mean, borderline, maybe, I know. but it could happen for sure. Yeah. You can look at the uh, map videos. We have Secret Spring and Expedition Lost taken away. And so we have Overgrowth, Finding Research Station, Deadwing, Catalina, and Inferno Pools to wrap things up. The unconventional map that is wrapping things up. And of course, it's spawn dependent on how things go. Uh, so, dude, how, how are you looking at this? Uh, and I mean, actually, I can even throw in some statistics here as well. Um, seven to eight is the current map score overall between these two players. Very tightly contested. Cool. They met multiple times. Do you feel like these maps will influence that record at all going into the series? I'm not sure. At first, I was looking at this map selection, and I was like, yeah, this, is, this seems fairly traditional. You know, Secret Spring being vetoed by the Zerg and uh, the Terran vetoing Expedition Lost. But the thing that really stands out to me is that uh, Maru chose Vani Research Station before he chose Catalena, and this is really weird to me. And uh, I wonder if he has something special prepared for this map, perhaps, because um, we saw how good Dark played against Teja and Vani. So yeah. this is just really surprising to me. I think Catalina's rocking a 100% Terran pick rate right now, by the way. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a Protoss or a Zerg pick right. it. No, um, absolutely not. It, it's not a map you want to play as Zerg against Terran, so I can understand this. Uh, mm. But still, it, it's just a really big surprise to me yeah. to see Catalina being chosen this late. Yeah. Further down in the best of five? Yeah. yeah Maybe he's that confident. Yeah, it's overall. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> Maru did lose a life in IEM Taipei in the finals by a score of 3-4, to four, narrowly being defeated there for the championship, but he does qualify through that route. Meanwhile, Dark had to go through a pretty tough qualifier himself to get here. Uh, before we go to the Gazers, let's get predictions once more, starting with Rardim. Um, I would I will solve one map. I would say Maru 3-1 this one. Maru 3-1. Okay. Maru Maru three three so he's going against the Zerg. I was wrong on fantasy, but I'm going to keep the dream alive. I'm going to keep rooting for the underdogs now that uh, I've lost all my esports I'm embedding. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Dark, and I think it'll be 3 2. Another fantastic series is the hope. And Snoot? I'm cheering for the Zerg, but I think Maru is going to take this one uh, 3 2. So that's it. Uh, Zerg's just done this tournament. Perhaps. Right here. But it's not going to be TVT, at least on that side of the finals, because we do know that trap was able to advance. And that wraps up the pregame analysis here. We're going to give it to Apollo and Maynard, who will be taking you through this awesome TVZ. Gen Domine Karamitsi, Yachimash! Are you ready for Dark versus Maru? Everybody should be ready for this, Maynard. This is one of the most anticipated matches in the quarterfinals. This is a huge game between these two players. As Red Eye has already mentioned, this is Dark's biggest day in his entire life. In his entire career, this is a huge moment for him on the big stages, as far as he's ever been in a big tournament like this, in any tournament. Whereas Maru is a finalist from the last Intellectual Masters in Taipei, 
and now they go head to head against each other. The last remaining Zerg against a player who's looking to win that trophy. He's already told us that he's expecting to win the championship. It's a walk in the park for this guy usually when he plays StarCraft. He's already displayed that yesterday when he had that 3-0 versus Patience. And as In Control said, it was a beatdown. Absolutely. And speaking of beatdowns, we saw quite a few of them in Taipei, which was Lamaru's last major international event, where he was smacking Zergs down left to right. Of course, didn't manage to get there in the end, but right. Red Eye said it very, very truly that he has the best TVZ in the world. Very, very hard to argue. Sure, Dream is great. Sure, Innovation beat life. But Maru's consistent TVZ, his yeah. non-stop aggression, we're going to be seeing some very aggressive games from him today. Aggressive games, but also defensive games from Dark. We saw that when he played against Tasia. And now this is the true test for Dark. This is, as everyone said on the desk, this is it. This is his big test. If he does this, then everybody's now going to accept that Dark is one of the best Zergs in the world. If he fails, then the hype dies yep. down. But there's a lot of belief around him that he can go up against a player of Mara, who is the best Terran out there. That's why this series is so hype. We got the we got the best or or one of the best Terrans in the world. I'm gonna say he's the best Terran in the world right now. Really, really hard to argue for me, from my perspective. Yeah. And Dark probably you can't say that he's greater than life, but you can say that he's equal equal or second best with the blacks of Sue. Uh, I mean Rogue, the other great Zergs, but Dark kind of just seems to be above them slightly. He's it, he got a lot of hype and it's very very well deserved. And especially because he played so well against Asia before and. Yesterday, when we were watching Dark play, or the day before, we had, we had questions ourselves about him. Which player was going to turn up to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship? Was it going to be that player that is looked upon in Pro League as one of the best up-and-coming players that we've seen for a very long time? Or is he just going to flake? Is he going to get nervous? Is he going to crumble and just lose to Teja, who had all that experience? But he came, he showed what he's made of, he was looking great. And now, this is it. This is a massive moment for him. He's been warming up backstage. He's been looking a little bit nervous back there. But at the same time, despite looking like that, I have a, I have a feeling that he's going to come into this very confident because of how well he dispatched of Tasia three games yeah. to one. And if you're the defensive guy against the guy that you know is going to be aggressive, then generally the defensive player is going to have the defender's advantage. The defender's right. advantage is very real, very powerful in StarCraft 2. And as a Zerg, with your shorter rally points, with the fact that you can pull up the lava and make the right units if you know that it's coming, if you see it coming, and that's the big if. Will he see it coming and will he make, will he react properly? Maru is one of the most aggressive players in StarCraft in every matchup that he plays. He plays very similar to, we all know how live plays, the Ling run buys, the counter attacks, his aggressive play style. Maru is the Terran version of that. He loves to proxy Reaper, he loves to win games easily, he's got great control, he's dropping all over the place, his macro to back it up is fantastic. And this is where the true test is going to be for Dog. Can he match the speed of this 17-year-old in all these different areas? If he can, then we are going to see some of the best Terran versus Zerg that we've seen in a very, very long time. If he isn't able to be able to keep up, then this is going to be more one-sided. And I, and I believe in Dark. He's fast. Snoot has already pointed out that he's fast. His creep spread is incredible. He never misses Lava Injects. He gets all his queens. He hits it hard. And he's able to produce a lot of units, which is, uh, it gives him the ability to push back Terran time after time after time. Absolutely right. Good points. Now, the players do need a one-minute break. Sorry, guys, but the series will be underway very, very shortly. I promise you that Mario vs. Dark Game 1 is up next very soon. Do not go away.
favorite cast, favorite watch. Cannot I, wait. I think over the years, Terran versus Zerg has had the most memorable matchups. I would say out of any any matchup in StarCraft II. When I think back to Epic Games, I think about Terran versus Zerg, and I'm sure this one could deliver. It's really up to Dark here. Maru would be coming into this as a favorite. Hard to argue. Yeah. Maru's definitely the favorite coming into this, but Dark has the potential to overcome Maru, the finalist of Taipei, and potentially pick up the World Championship trophy through qualifying online, which is huge. It's a massive deal. This is a massive game. Without further ado, the game has begun. Let's get into this. In the bottom left here on Overgrowth, from Jinnah Greenwings, this is Maru. And in the top right, the last remaining Zerg in the World Championship, it's SKT1's Dark. Both players have had a very successful 2015 already. Maru's reached two finals. Taipei and Star League is looking up at a, uh, at a potential third if he does well here. They're both highly ranked in the WCS system as well. Maru comes in at rank three in the world. Dark comes in at rank nine. If the point system was frozen today, both would be playing at the global finals. Only that is not if. the case. <laughs> but both showing excellent games so far this year. And as we've mentioned, Maru is definitely one of the, if not the best Terran in the world with Dark catching up and closing on top three, if not in top three. Yeah, and a lot of pressure off him coming into this bracket. Everyone looking at that bracket would have been, okay, life is our Zerg hope. Sure, exactly. Dark, Dark is amazing, but yep. life is, like everyone we saying that, 99 out of 100 people, that life is our last hope, but this is our last hope. It's all up to him. How does he feel knowing that an incredible Zerg, the World Championship is out of this tournament, and it's all up to him to beat people like Maru in ZVT. He's done it before, yes, which is has. the most important part here. They've played in Pro League, they've played in GSL, and they've traded wins back and forth. The last time they played was just in February, just last month, and it went in favor of Dark. So just putting that out there, he's done it before, he can do it again. But let's have a look at how these builds are shaping up. We've got Hatchery, Gas, then Spawn Impulse. So we're gonna have a very early Zergling speed coming out from Dark, which he can use defensively, can use it aggressively, and can just kind of control the pace of the game a little bit more with this. And whereas on the other side of the map, we have Maru who's decided to go command center first. This isn't, a, this isn't very common, but still definitely viable, and it's gonna give him a good boost in economy to start him off. Yeah, and absolutely, he's gonna have a nice little bit of, an in of, a, of a mineral income, a bit of an econ lead in the early game as, uh, you know, Dark isn't going for three hatcheries or anything like that. It exactly, is just yeah. gas pool. Oh man, this this matchup. I mean, you were talking about these players. They've faced each other in pro league. They are best of ones, but this is a best of five. And can, are you the player that can win in a best of five? Dark hasn't done that before, not in individual leagues. This is no. the furthest he's been. And um, wow, all eyes are on him. All right. So one big point to bring up here is Maru through going command center first and not a reaper has no information on Dark at all. He hasn't scouted, he doesn't know about the gas being taken, doesn't know about Zirkling Speed on the way. And there's an overload on this natural, which does see this wall to be. So yep. there could be an opportunity where we see a Ling Flood to try to get damage done very, very early on. Only two Zirklings have been made, but we'll keep that at the back of our mind to see if that type of play could come out. Yeah, Speed Halfway done, and uh, well put out there by Funker, our incredible observer, that there is a gap for, uh, for the Lings to make it around the right side if they wanted to flood through. That's yeah, well, there's definitely there's definitely space, but we see a second guess being taken here for Maru. Okay. So he's going to be going up to a little bit of aggression. So this is even going to be uh, Cloak Banshees, could be Hellbats. We've seen a lot of success from Terrans as of recently. And we'll see if that's going to come through again today. Yeah, we saw Tasia get aggressive with the Hellbats. We saw Cure get aggressive with the Hellbats as well. Link's coming down here, having a look at the front, seeing the bunker, yep. no opening there, and it just looks like Dark's going to drone for now. No interest in the Link Flood. Third command center has been put down straight after that. Second gas has been taken. And it looks more like we are going to see a Banshee play. Yeah, so it and looks like it. Oh, Dark is trying, he's oh. got certain speed. He's trying to get some information. He's he gets it. it. He gets the, the intel. Lab. Wow. Very, very nice intel there from that one Zergling. Definitely paid for itself. Yeah, he waited till Zergling speed was done, ran past the bunker, 
now knows what he's up against. Double gas, cloak banshees, then the third command center behind it. Good scout there from Dark. Absolutely. It really is nice how when the Ling gets up there on that ramp, you do have vision of that right gas, as well as the, uh, you know, the vision of the, of the, the, well, the placement of the structures as well. Dark's creep spread has begun. The third hatchery is down. Hellion's going to come across only a couple. They're not the damage dealers. The real damage dealer here is the Cloak Banshee, which of course right. Dark is already preparing against, and he's dropping a Roach Warren as well. Yeah, just in case there was to be an armory to follow this up for a Hell Bat Banshee play. He's covering all bases at the moment. He got a great scout, and that gives him the push ahead to be able to make these correct calls, which he's done. As indeed. Mari getting really not much information at all with these Hellions just far. They are, they are up in number. They're getting up to the four, so they can get uh, run yeah. by. I mean, Dark is already a great placement with these Queens. He's not going to let that happen. He's too good to let that happen. Yeah, the only intel that Mara's gathered so far is that he's not been all in because he went to see if the third base was there or not. He knows it's there. He knows it was put down at a pretty decent time, which means there is no attack coming his way. Uh, interesting mistake. That's actually a bit of a mistake there from Mari that um, Mule kind of just... Uh, I think he pulled it off yeah. just right before. Um, I think at that type when the mule is there, you, if he goes back towards the command center, it runs out and just dies. So you think he's just kind of saving minerals a little bit with that, that rather than going point. to waste. Good point. Haven't seen that before, so that's a cool trick from Mario. Nidus Worm play going to be from Dark, an exciting game. Oh, one. All we right. thought the aggression would be coming from the little Janir Greenwings player. Interesting. The queen counts at five. He's going up to seven. Roaches are being made. And as much as I thought that roach play was probably defensive in case Halbats, no, 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 no. We are going to see uh, this Nidus Worm being planted down. Overlord oh. has been spotted, but the, is that Marine going to be able to target this Nidus? It's going to be at the back there. Oh, the Banshee! All right. Just out of range. Nidus is on its way. He it's been it. seen, kind of, but he's not reacting to it yet. Maru needs to react to this if this... If this plant is going to have he's roaches not, and queens inside here. He's not reacting at all. The marine on patrol is out of range. The AI is not targeting it. He's completely oblivious, not looking at the video at all. The Nidus Worm is through. And here come the roaches of Dark with queens. Jumping creep as well. Maru already in a lot of trouble in game number one. Roaches all over the production. The Banshee has to come back to defend. An excellent play here from Dark. And Maru didn't stop it. And now he's in a lot of oh. trouble. Stim is being targeted down. But the Banshee's so important. There's overseas and queens to bring it down. Oh my god, the queens are getting transfused. The third even being attacked by circlings just for salt in the wounds of Maru. The, the marines are trying to position behind the SCVs. The SCVs are in a terrible choke where the roaches are actually picking the perfect fight. They're, they're, they've managed to save Stim, which is fantastic. Stim is about to finish for Maru. 23 SCVs have died though, and that is critical damage, Apollo. It is critical, and Maru is in so much trouble right now. His third is exposed, his natural's not mining, and there are more roaches and more queens on the way. Excellent execution from Dark, and it looks like he's gonna take map number one against the Inter Street Masters Taipei finalist. Wow, look at that army supply and worker supply difference. Maru is dead in the water right now. Dark all over this. What a great game, number one, giving some hope to all the Zerg fans out there watching the World Championships. He's going to get a nice little healthy lead here. Lots of Zerg fans on the crowd as well. More roaches, more queens are going to be consistently rallied in. There's almost no SCVs left. Structures are going down. It is over. Dark. SKT one's dark. The remaining hope for his race. Gets himself a nice little 1-0 lead in this best of five series. Excellent choice of strategy there by Dark. Hitting in at the weakest point of Terran in all Terran versus Zerg. It's right before production kicks in, right before Marines and upgrades start coming out, and he hit it. And at that point, when you are weak as a Terran play, you cannot allow the Nidus to plant. It's that simple. You cannot allow the Nidus in. The frustrating part for Maru there, and you could see it in his face, he was visibly frustrated with game number one. Hopefully it doesn't tilt him too much into game number two. But he saw that the Nidus one was, a pit, was a, on you the minimap the entire time while it was being built. In his, in his minimap, even if he wasn't looking at it, on the minimap there would have been a blip, there would yes. have been a little red dot that was there. He could have seen if he was looking and paying attention to the minimap, but unfortunately he didn't, and he got, he got killed because of it. Frustrating loss for Maru, but a nail-biting victory there for Dark. And we're going to take a 90-second break, guys. Do not go away. Game number two between Maru and Dark is up next.
G'day guys, welcome back. Dark, one map up in this incredible series against arguably the best Terran in the world with the best TVZ in the world. A beautifully executed map number one. Perfectly planned out there from Dark and he nailed it. Excellent execution and takes map number one against the Intel Extreme Masters Taipei finalists. And now we have a game on our hands because the next map, Vani Research Station. At this level of StarCraft II competition, you, you can't afford to go down 0-2 against an opponent at this level. Coming, and, uh, coming back three games in a row is so incredibly difficult and only the best of the very best can make this happen. This is an important map for Maru. He must tie this series up. Absolutely. And some would say that maybe it was his, his mistake, the reason that he lost that map, but others would say that dark strategy was paramount and it definitely worked. Game number two, let's watch it unfold. In the southernmost position here on Varney Research Station, it's Junior Greenwings Maru! So much love. What a great crowd here in Katowice. Let's make some noise as well for SKT1's Dark. <laughs> Poland loves StarCraft, Apollo. Yes, Confirmed. it does. And it has done for a very, very long time. And we are very happy to be here once again, as we were last year. But now serious business. It's all about this now. This is a massive series between these two. We get closer and closer towards the semifinals, which will be played out later on this evening. We get closer and closer towards the grand finals, which will be played in the Spodek Arena tomorrow afternoon. And which one of these players is going through to the semifinals? Which one will be knocked out and finish just top eight at the World Championship Series? Well, looking like Dark's going to have to deal with a little bit of aggression, Apollo, in the early game with Maru opening for that triple Reaper with the 11 Barracks. That is, the 11 Barracks and the 11 Gas. Three Reapers are going to be made, and Maru has some of the best Reaper control. He's very, very clinical with his movement. He gets drones, he gets lings easier than other Zerg players, so, uh, other Terran players, excuse me. So Dark has to be on the ball in his defense. He's, oh. His Reaper control is out of this world. I even remember him proxying Reapers in Taipei against Zergs on this very map, in fact. I think it might have been true. Yeah. And bunker rushing. It was incredible. And that is exactly what Dark's Overlords have been looking for. If you look to this yeah. left-hand side Overlord, it's come all the way to the left-hand side to see if there were barracks planted here or not. Yeah, and that's not something that you... <laughs> when, when someone's that good at control and they have that many Reapers, that's not something you ever want to be up against. The SCV going for the scout here. Reaper he may, number one about the pop. He may build a bunker with this. It's kind of looking like it. I mean, the, if the SCV goes unadulted, and uh, I mean, he's, he's obviously going to go in for a no. look because he has to, but uh, yeah, it I doesn't think Dark look like might a tag it. He just checks the uh, extractor, knows the gas income and the timing of this, and that the spawn and pull <laughs> was slightly earlier here than the gas compared being, to the previous game. He's being a very cheeky bugger with his SCV attacking the gas drones. Yeah, he is. It's a bit of a nuisance bringing down the health of the drones just by a little bit, which means the Reaper's going to have an easier time picking off them. True. Could knock it down to one shot. Ooh, yeah. Almost one shot. Uh, nice save there from Dark. It's all up to his drone control and whether or not he can uh, save them into structures or zone them out with the lings. Queen is only halfway done. Yeah, so he's got a little bit more time to wait. One Zerg going to get picked off. One so far. It's incredible Terran with incredible Reaper control. But that said, though, Dark's control has been pretty tight as well. Drone kill. Ooh, oh, nice save. Very, very close. Oh! oh! An uncharacteristic mistake from um, from Maru there, getting zoned out of the like kind of like a linebacker in the NFL, knocking the Reaper into the Queen range. You are not ever meant to be losing no. Reapers this early on. Wow, looking like Maru might be a little bit rustled after that first game. And that needs to pull his head in. That is a great position for Dark to be in when your opponent, as you say, a little bit rustled. He can take full advantage of this. Full advantage. Absolutely. Now Reaper 2 is going to come in, but the thing is, there's not three anymore. It's just the two. I mean, the, the, there's so opening. many repercussions of losing the Reaper so early on. You're not going to start to harass the Queens. You're not going to get to the drone line, and it's going to be much easier for Dark to take his third. This, It's really, really big to lose a Reaper this early on. Yeah, so the small economy hit that you take for going for the aggressive opening is all for naught. But exactly. Mario's going to try and rectify this for going for a very, very fast 
3cc, but this Overlord is looking to scout it. Yeah, he moves in, sees oh. a lack of gas, uh, but he can, al yeah, or he can nice. already predict that the command center is going to be down. So he doesn't want to lose the Overlord. He's happy with Spicy and this lack of second gas, and he's just going to retreat back knowing that, Mar that a Marine is on his way. With the first Marine coming out, we will probably be seeing more aggressive sort of play here from Maru as he goes for the starport nice and quickly as well. Yeah. Third hatchery being taken by Dark on the other side. And takes a, takes a gas, a second gas on the natural. So it's not the fastest type of Banshee play, but it still can be a Banshee play just a little bit later after this third command center. So just two Reapers with two Hellions heading across. This is not a hatchery killing force. This isn't two with six Hellions or anything like that. So he's just going for a scout and seeing if he can get a cheeky drone or two. Maybe some links. And this is quite cool, actually. Notice that Dark hasn't really built any Zerglings. Uh, he had a couple on the other side of the map trying to do a counter-attack. He's only got these six. It was stopped. But he hasn't built more than that. He's only relying on Queen defense. And that's probably because he, the, the Reaper was lost early on. So the amount of aggression at this point is not as strong as it would be usually when that third Reaper is there, which is allowing Dark to drone a lot heavier than most Zergs would. The one weakness of this play is if the Hellions run by the Queen. So you can actually note that Dark has the Queens on the ramp to prevent that from happening. But his economy is zooming ahead because of this. Yeah, absolutely. He's in a very healthy position here. The Zergs certainly like drones. We've got the Reaper coming in here to see if any tech goes down. He sees a lair. So not all for naught. He has three Hellions here. Looking for any drone transfers. Nothing there. Maybe a creep tumor. Can't and get a thing. Even though the scout of the, the lair is there, he loses another Reaper, which again depowers this type of mid-game aggression. And so only drones have been made. 12 additional drones off the back of the very early Zerglings that he had at the very beginning of the game to deflect against the Reaper. So the economy is so very, very, very powerful for Dark coming into this mid-stage. The Banshee needs to do damage, otherwise this mid-game yeah. is going to be completely dominated by Dark. Dark's over 50 drones. He's on 52 right now against the 30, uh, 38 SMBs of Morris. So that's a huge lead. Wow, and it just keeps climbing. You're absolutely right. This Banshee needs to some, somehow circumnavigate the spore defense of uh, of Dark, which are up here, and, and find some find some drones. But there's already a second Queen and Creeps ready. And there's an Overseer being morphed as well to, to help in the blind spots where the spore crawlers don't have range. Here we go. One drone is going to go down. Two looking like it. This Banshee doesn't really want to pick a fight with two Queens. One not too bad. Actually, this, ban this Queen's taking a lot of uh, damage for free because the Overseer a little bit late to the party, but the Banshee will live with... Uh... So there's a, it's a couple drone kills, but it's not enough just yet. The creep spread looking gorgeous, by the way, in the center of the map. Pushing oh, wow. so far out. The Hellions and Reapers, again, from the very early part of the game, haven't been keeping this back. The Banshees really haven't gotten that many kills. Still only drones. We've seen no units at all from Dark. It's just Queen defense alone, and he's taken his fourth. His economy super high. He's got a... or should have a macro hatch on the way very, very soon. This is a wonderful, wonderful game from Dark. This is a perfect game. Yeah, absolutely. He's been completely, well, I mean, not completely. He's lost a couple of drones, but other than that, pretty much untouched by Mari here. Speaking of getting touched, this Banshee looking in for a little bit more of a, of a, of a drone sort of reckoning, but doesn't really happen. Oh, that Banshee again getting very low. Out of energy as well, cannot get in there and fight anymore. All right, so come uh, the, the 10, 11 minute mark is when many facts start coming into play and the Marines are starting to move out. But look how good this creep spread is already. This is going to be very difficult for Maru because he's going to have to push this creep back. He has to push this back, but the spine crawler from the very early game is going to reposition itself. Bailing's already been morphed, and because the economy is pretty much as good as it could get for Dark, he has a high unit count that started already, but the Banshee has done a bit of damage now. Six drone kills is hurting Dark a little bit, but still overall very, very good position for Dark. Absolutely. Maru can recover. He's got three CCs, plenty of energy. Looking like Dark's going to go for a little bit of a funny business here with some bailings, but he has been spotted. Hellion's going to clean that up, so... It's a very, very strong play on this map with the Tall Grass. He can get those run-bys with the bailings, but Maru on top of it in this early game. So yeah, I mean, the window for dropping is starting to close here with the, with the Spire about to finish and, the, and the, the gas being banked up for Dark. He's going to be making probably about 11 or 12 muters when that finishes. Yeah, he's holding off from 2-2, actually. Instead of uh, researching 2-2, he's waiting for the Spire to complete to build his choice of units. But... Oh, nice target fire, but he does take one hit on the, on the Marines there. Yeah, loses about six Marines or so uh, yeah. without doing really anything. And now Mulus are on the way. One thing that has only just come in after the Mulisks are uh, and is the 2-2 with the overlord speed to start to spread, uh, spread overlords. The right-hand side is pretty weak here for Dark. He doesn't have any coverage. He's only got creep spread coverage. Zell Nogger Tower's only just now been started. Drops toward the back could start to do a lot of damage. He actually, just as you say that, rectified it by taking the tower. Maru uh, 
standing and taking up tumors, and rightfully so, because there are quite a lot. Oh, the Marines only got caught there, but a hot pickup there from Mario does keep the Marines alive. No hits. It is held that time. The Marines and the Mines are getting placed. And it's up to Dark to get a cost-efficient trade here. Or his hatchery is going to be in a spot of bother. Pushing forward with the Helldash. Spinecrawler not in range, but the Lings and the Banelings are looking for those Marines. They do pick the Helldash. They want a connection on the Marines as well. It's looking like he... Oh, that wouldn't mind hitting the Muters there, and then may just be enough. Ooh. No, he has to pick up and pull out. Pretty good fight there for Mario. Traded yeah. off pretty well. Um, overall, that was a, quite a bit of damage. He's got a high army supply, and he's bringing his next wave uh. through. Uh, I'm not sure what that Banshee's doing, so that's just going to die off immediately. But the next wave of Marines is here. Another set of buildings have been morphed in. Life was all too much for that Banshee. But the Banelings coming through. A good Widow Mine here, taking out the last couple Banshee, uh, the Banelings. Sorry, the last couple Banelings there of uh, of, uh, of Dark. And Maru is continuing the pressure. He is, he's got a lot of creep to walk over to get to that hatchery. Yeah, he's cleared up a lot of that creep, pushing it back all the way to the fourth base. Creep is going to be respread, but right now this is pretty good for Maru to keep the creep low. And he's just straight marining here. He's got one Marauder, but it is all about the Marines and the Mines at this stage of the game. Yeah, and it's all about the splits. It's, you yeah. know, the Baneling detonations, the, the Widow Mine hits. And Micro is Maru's strength, and he's playing to that by having that army that can be so effective if Micro correctly. More Baneling scrolling in, and they do actually connect with quite a bit of bio there, but they are cleaned up. Not and so Maru, many Banelings left. Yeah, Maru has still has quite a few Marines and not that many Banelings, as mentioned. So he can actually continue to press the issue, taking another hit, but not a devastating hit. The medevacs are all still medevacs in the sky for Maru. Yeah, and one important upgrade that's been forgotten by Maru is drilling claws. So the Widow Mines are not as effective as they would do usually because they're able to borrow and unborrow much faster. But yeah. now they're in a bit of trouble. I mean, it's, it's always nice to have that upgrade. But the most important part of this game is the fight for the fourth base. If Maru can break Dark and get Ooh. to it, excellent. And Dark's going off creep here with a lot of the Banelings and the Lings, and I think that the splits from Maru are just going to be... Well, actually, the Banelings have got him pressed up against the wall, and he does take a hit, but there is still so much bio on the ground. The Muters can't get into the Medivacs. And there's only two Banelings left, so there's a bit of downtime here. Maru's going to hold this high ground position again. He scans, he has a look, sees more Banelings being morphed in. Does indeed. Scans and sees what he's up against. More rejoining the fight is yeah. not that big of a reinforcement. And that was a pretty good fight for Mara to run back off Creep, and he's done such a good job of bringing this Creep back despite how far forward it was before. The Banelings looking for another clock. Oh, that's a brilliant trade there for Maru. No yeah. damage at all from those Banelings. And you need to get these Baneling hits. 11 more on the way for Dark. Now, that is a scary amount of Banelings. Yeah. As good as Dark started this game, Maru is starting to take control of it again. He's got this fourth base in a bit of a submission hold, and he's going to keep wearing this down. And I love that he's starting to clean up the creep. Now that the creep's dissipated, he has this nice little spot. Yeah, look at this beautiful, yeah. beautiful spread. And now a Thor in the mix. This is really annoying. You can no longer really put forward with Mutalus to kill off Widow Mines or small squads of units. And Dark, interestingly, is going to go for a counter. But can he still hold the fourth while doing the counter play? Yeah, he's actually putting a lot of his defense into offense here. And sure, the rally is being cleaned up. Actually, Maru might be looking at home because he took a big hit on the on, on the, the, the bio force there from Banelings. The Thor does go down, and these Lings are tearing things up in the third of Maru. This the Banelings, oh, nearly collect with the He bio. forces the lift up, but the Zergling counterattack is doing a lot of damage into the SCV line. He's getting a lot of these moves, and this is a really good play because the most important part is that he kept his fourth alive while doing this. He's not taking too much damage. 10 SCVs have gone down, an excellent counter from Dark, and that actually, because of that, puts him in a lead by 20 supply and gives him breathing room to get that creep spread out there again. Absolutely, and he's just taken an army supply lead as well. 30 workers up, 82 drones to the 50 yeah. of Maru. That, I cannot stress how important that counter was. And it's looking like he's running through again. He's again forcing a pullback here there's, from Maru. There's, there's Mutalus and there's no turrets! Maru oh skipped on all the Taurus, there's none in the natural, in the main there's none! Oh my god, he's gonna take more Econ damage here. Devastating moments here for Maru, he's in a lot of trouble. The mute is completely uncontested. The Marines of Maru are going for a fullback, they have to run into the main. But the, this map just makes it so hard to run when you're at the third to get all the way back in the natural. You need those turrets, you need Thors in the main, anything. And just like that, Maru had Dark where he wanted, 
and then bam, counter-attack and readjustment, rethought process, and he changed up his game plan, and now we have a major, major advantage for the Zerg player. Dark is looking at this 2-0. We talked about how important it was oh for Mara God. not to let this happen. This is a huge moment for the SK Telecom Zerg. That income difference is really telling the tale here in this game. That is what happens when you are this far ahead in the economy. Look at how much room he's given himself. The creep spread is now approaching the halfway point of this map. He's taken a fifth, he's oh. into the natural again. And why not? He's only using a few muters to do this as well. More muters are out here than actually the majority of the muters yeah. on that force. And a good pullback from that Widow Mine. Great reactions, great multitask here from Dark. Just a great game in general. A beautiful game here, and he's, he may try to snipe this planetary. If he brings this down, this is huge. And the income difference is going to be absolutely crazy in favor of Dark. He's going to go for it. And here we go. The Banelings do look for that planetary, and they're going to get it down as well. The planetary is all gone, and Maru is all but dead at this point. He's in so, so much trouble. I can't even think of a way that he can come back. Maru is, uh, he is so dead at this point. You have nailed it. It's 14 SCVs down, planetary down. Maru has one final attack to hopefully hopefully break Dark's lines, but Dark has got a lot of new units out. He, all he needs to do is morph a lot of bailings, hold off against his push, and he will go up 2-0 in this series. He has nearly 100 Zerglings back at home, and 30 of them, 40 of them are being turned into bailings right now, and how is Mari going to engage that? I don't think you can, Maynard, and we are going to see one big banging flood into these Marines, despite 3-3. It is going to be almost impossible to stop this. Just a small trickle to start, but we know that there's more where that came from. Dark's major defense is about to come through here. In roll the Bane Lakes. The Bio Maru is trying to do its best. It just looks like way too much for the SKT Zerg. And Maru, just with a small Bio Force, does not have enough to clean up this army of Dark. Dark is going to take a 2-0 lead here against this incredible Junior Terran. The Metamax pull back. GG! Dark! Who expected this? Who expected this Zerg to be 2-0 up against the best TVZ player in the world? I am sure he is very, very happy inside right now, but it is not over yet. Maru is down 0-2. He is the finalist from Taipei. And remember back then, the only person that could stop him was life, and he, he destroyed everybody at that tournament. He looked great yesterday in the round of 16, 3-0 versus Patience, and it was the most one-sided game we've seen in a competitive level for a long time. But it looks like on that stage, he has met his match. Maru is going to need, well, about to take a break, and he's going to need all 90 of those seconds to think about this game. It is his last chance. I can't believe I'm saying this. Dark 2-0 up against Maru, of all people. So visibly frustrated here. Let's take a break and let's see if Maru can tie this series next on the Intel Extreme Catawid says StarCraft stream. And we're back, guys. This defining moment. Dark, one map away from the semi-finals of the World Championship. Apollo, could this get any more hype right now? This is the most important day of Dark's life. This is 
a huge moment for the player who has for the first time reached a top eight in a tournament at this scale, and he goes up against one of the best Terran players in the world. Maru needs to show the reason that he is considered one of the best in the world in these next maps. He has to do the unthinkable, win three games in a row against Dark, who is looking, he's looking on fire. And he really is becoming a favorite. The more he plays, the more we are seeing this. A favorite to challenge for the trophy. And we're going to need to see the old Maru here, Apollo. I don't want to see his first Reaper being taken out by a queen. I don't want to see his drops being shut down. I want to see the Maru of old, the guy whose drops looked unstoppable, his yeah. Reapers looked unkillable, his bio looked unconnectable with Banelings. Yeah. But he just hasn't shown that yet the first two games. And I just want to remind you, if you didn't know already, or if you did from yesterday, Maru said, in a winner's interview, after life had been knocked out, he said, there is nobody else in this tournament that can stop me from winning the tournament. It is his to win, and the only thing that could stop him was himself. And it's looking like that. that it's looking like these, that. These are mistakes. Look these at him on screen. control mistakes. He, yeah, he's visibly frustrated. It's like he's, he's already been defeated, and he needs to buckle down and not let this happen. He's an emotional player, and... He has let wins and losses, or more so losses, get to him in the past, and this is not the time you want this to happen. We have seen Prime, or well, the old Prime Terrans, be emotional in the past. Maru is well above that, surely. This guy is a potential world champion. He's not just, you know, he was second in Taipei with the greatest TBZ finals I've ever seen in my entire life in Polo. That TBZ finals against Life, I had the pleasure of being there and uh, saw it unfold, and my God. That's a, that Taipei crowd was going insane. Social media was exploding with how incredible Maru played against the world champion. And he's struggling against Dark here. But over the last couple of months, Dark has been waiting to break out. And this finally seems to be the moment. He's got Maru in, I don't even know. Look at him, just look at Maru. He's, this isn't what we usually see from him. Yeah, he's the calm, collected, robotic Terran. Usually see Maru as the player who's leaning back in his chair, taking this other StarCraft player for a walk in the park and showing him how to play StarCraft, but that is not the case today. Well, we saw his, uh, his body language in the round of 16. He looked bored. He, he usually like, does. He, he like, usually give me, does. Give me a challenge. That's what it looks like when he slumps in that chair. But uh, he's leaning forward, head in hands. Got to contemplate this. this is so important for Dark, as we mentioned at the beginning, and we came back into this, but conversely, incredibly important for this player as well, to keep the hopes for his fans alive. But we have an entire race's hopes to contend with as well, with Dark being the last Zerg and all. And he is looking so strong, just one map away from, I mean, he's already set his own record. Yeah. And when he gets to the semis, can his, can, can his role be stopped? I mean, he'll be going up against Trap if he wins. And uh, that'll be one of the few PBZs that we've had. And I'm sure that Dark's going to be feeling comfortable yeah. moving on to the semis. And he could be looking at the grand finals where he would play on stage in front of over 10,000 live spectators in the arena fighting for the first place prize of just about $70,000, second place being 15. And all those important WCS points, which gives you the necessary points to qualify for the global finals at the end of the year. We've started this year very strong. A lot of points are out there and available. And a lot of money here and the chance to get your name on the trophy. Very important moment. That's right. We're getting into a break. and We'll see you guys very shortly for the game.
All right, StarCraft fans, we are all set. Game number three about to begin between Maru and Dark. We've been talking about this series, how important it is for both players. And this player on screen, one, he's one map away from making history. He must, even though he's playing against Maru, he must be feeling so confident. He is two games up. He has to lose every single map, three in a row, to not move on to the semifinals here. Maru has an uphill battle, and as mentioned before, he needs to show us the reason why he's considered one of the best in the world. This is a very important moment for Maru, and he has to deliver. He has to deliver. Absolutely. We've seen three game comebacks from Terrence in this tournament before. Will Maru be one of them? Very, very important task for him as he get into this game here. And guys, this may potentially be your last chance. Make some noise for this guy, Jin Air Green Wings Maru. I hope he can feel the love from inside that booth. He's going to need everything he can possibly get here against this incredibly, incredibly strong and impressive Zerg. All Zerg fans, make some noise for SKT1 Star! Katowice, I am slowly but madly falling in love with you. You are the greatest crowd I have ever casted in front of, bar none. This is so sick. All right, so big moments now for Maru on every decision he makes. We've not seen any early spawning pool coming out from Dark to challenge a command center first or anything along the lines like that. And I don't think we need to see anything tricky, anything complicated or fancy from Dark. He just needs to keep playing the same game. And I can't stress, as mentioned in that previous cast, how smart and how intelligent it was to go for a counterattack with Zerglings despite being under full pressure. They were trading, they were back and forth. And if you just think, if that counterattack didn't happen, the fourth base establishes itself, three, three upgrades complete, and you're no longer trading equally, and you're starting to lose fights, and then you're gonna pretty much lose that fourth. That counterattack changed everything. It pulled Maru back, um, he, and then all of a sudden Dot could respread his creep. The Mulus got into the back as well, and it was just a beautifully, beautifully played piece from Dark. And that deserved the win. Absolutely. That, that game getting into the mid-game was the perfect ZVT game. Not many people in the world that can play a ZVT that perfectly. We're looking at the, one of them right now. And we have to talk about the spawn positions here. I mean, this is Deadwing. Yeah. This is a spawn-dependent map, rota rotationally symmetrical, as, as people would call it. And um, these are close air distance, which is decent for a player like Maru, who does like to multitask. We've seen yeah. his drop play on this map before many, many times and he can hit the third while dropping the main, while hitting the natural behind the mineral line. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good position. It is. And if you think to the previous game, if he can set up what he did on the fourth base of Dark on that previous map here, there is no way to run around because you are controlling this little funneled area and Dark can't pull moves like that against him. So if Maru can get to that position again, he's going to be in much better shape. Reaper expand here from Maru is the play. Dropping the, dropping the reactor after only one Reaper coming through. Yeah. So he's, it's up to this. So he's not going to be losing this Reaper again. I guarantee you that Maru has pulled his head in. So faster reactor, faster factory, uh, only a single Reaper. Faster Hellions are going to come into play, but at the sacrifice of not having the three or two Reapers up here doing damage. That's right. So I heard circling here. Target fire from Maru. He's going to get a couple nice, here. Nice, very micro. nice. Nice micro from Maru. And that old scary queen is far back on the tree. This Reaper not diving too deeply here. He hasn't gotten too much information just yet, but he has got a couple link kills, which is great. Okay, so with the setup that we're seeing from Maru back at home, a third command center is going to come into play pretty fast. Again, cutting out the Reapers, faster reactor, faster factory, faster third command center. So he's really powering up towards that mid game as highlighted before. And as we said, if he can get there in a comfortable position, he's going to be looking strong. And it's going to come down to how Dark wants to combat that. Because Dark has already played this out a little bit different compared to previous matches. He's, only, he's been gasless until just the second, where he's decided to take two assimilators at once. And has that been scouted oh. in? It hasn't, not yet. 
The surround there, uh, actually a nice big concave of Queens with uh, from Dark. Mm. Nearly getting that Reaper, very close. A couple of volleys and it would have been dead. So Dark has a much powerful economy when it comes to mineral income because he's focused so heavily on drones early on and not getting Zergling speed. Zergling speed is delayed, but there's going to be a lot of options to choose from once he starts banking gas from both of these extractors. Does he go straight to layer? Does he throw a Roach Warren down? Does he want to go double evolution chambers pretty fast from this position? And this game looking quite similar from the last game from Armin, apart from the fact that he didn't open for three Reapers. He is having the same follow-up. It's okay. a Roach Warren down. Okay. So Roach Warren coming into play here. No layer. Okay, just now been yes. thrown in. So the layer is going to complete around this, uh, just uh, a little bit after the Roach Warrant finishing. So he could get Roach Speed fast. Is he going to get upgrades for his Roaches? What he could do against a greedy Terran player is research one one upgrades, research Roach Speed, and try to overwhelm the natural. This is a strategy that is used not very often, but can be powerful against the right play. Let's see what upgrades he goes for and how he wants to match this up. Mm, he is making the Marauders, which is going to be handy because we do know that Roaches are on the way. And plus one attack. This does mean that he does want to go into Roach production. Uh... Roach, she, Roach speed should be the upgrade chosen. Yeah. And he's going to be wanting to sit roughly around 50 drones to base economy and then power up heavily, 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 heavily of Roaches if this is what he's looking to do. Nice scout here from the Reaper, seeing the lair, seeing the gas. Has he seen the Roach Warren? He has seen he has, the Roach yes. Warren, but he doesn't know exactly what he's playing against. We're going to see a Roach Flood very shortly here, Maynard. Oop, Marauder production has started. So Maru is being a little bit cautious of this. Overlords are going to start to be built. Roaches... Okay, let me just explain this. All right. If this attack doesn't work and doesn't win the game, we're going to see 1-1 one -one upgrades coming in for Maru. He's going to have a better economy. He's going to have a lot of Marauders. And he's going to start to run around with Medivax and just cause a, a nightmare for Dark. But Dark is looking to win the game with this attack. Yes. He's going to have a huge upgrade advantage. And he spots the oh, Roaches. Oh, he's seen the Roaches. That is amazing. a big tell. That's um, a big tell. This Reaper is the MVP for Maru in this game so far. It's still alive and has getting, gotten him all that information, just a single Reaper. Yeah, and so two Marauders are out, a third one's just to come into play, a fourth one is going to be on the way shortly. He doesn't want to stop Marauder production. And already, Dark, I think, has switched out because of that scout. He's built 14 drones. Yeah. He's just going to try and put a, as much damage as he can with these Roaches, but the transition is underway. Now, with making all these drones and possibly losing yeah. all these Roaches, because it's the, the, if they go across the map, they're not going home. Dark Mara has completely switched out now. So he's going towards this, and he's going to force the lift up of the third base because Maru shouldn't have enough units yet to defend it and should be very worried about a complete Roach Flood. So the lift up should happen, and then he's going to go back to normal game and rush up towards 70 drones immediately, get building speed, maybe throw down the Spire and go back to melee upgrades, I would imagine. The lift does happen. The Roaches aren't going to go too deep, and Maru just staying defensive. Keeping it at the bunker, the Hellions, the yeah. Marauders, everything is back there. The faster Maru moves out to retake his third, the better it is for him. This is a fake. This is, he can move out now. Yeah. And the Reaper, actually, if it comes on the retreat, we'll confirm that the Roaches have moved back. He sees this extra hatchery here from Dark. He knows the transition is here, yeah. and this isn't an all-in at all. So, unfortunately for Dark, his plan and strategy has been spoilt by this Reaper. And now allows Maru a good time to move out before the next, before the transition is ready. We could see a lot of damage done by these Stims and 1 1 Marines and Marauders. But indeed, the creep's starting to be cleaned up. The push has begun for Maru. This isn't a rally push. It's just to try and clean up Creep and see what he can get done. Perhaps trade well against the Roaches. Dark obviously aware of this drop as well. And this is kind of the weakness of the Roaches. They have to pull back. A little bit of a drop play here. Maru not multi-prong attacking. Nearly losing a medevac full of units, but doesn't quite lose it. It's good for Maru, obviously. Gets to keep all of his units and pull back here. Equal worker supply, 64 apiece. Yeah, the gas alignment's a little bit off for Maru, having to build so many Marauders, medevacs. He hasn't been able to start 2-2 as soon as 1-1 is finished, just to keep that back in mind, because Dark is rushing ahead with his own. But so far, pretty equal, I would say, between both. Yeah, melee upgrades on the way for the Ling. It's going to be Ling Bane Muta. 
Yeah. Pushed into here. And it is held that time for Maru. It'll be very, very effective against those lings. So it two, becomes... Two already on the way. Maru's looking of, like he wanted to have from the very get-go is to control this area and keep Dark in his own little full base play where we can see Maru start to spread and play nicely. And this engagement already looking pretty decent for Maru. The Vaynings are coming through and they do connect with a bit of the, with a bit of the Marines balls here, but there's still quite a lot and not that many Vaynings at all. Coming through from the right, the Roach is doing the most damage here. Some four or five more Banelings on the left. Maru has to pick up. All oh, the Marines actually connected with the Banelings. That's not too bad for Dark. And uh, Maru forced to retreat. Where's actually, he going? He's going to go in the main. Yeah, where's he going? He's sending the Medivacs back with no units and then sending the three forward with. Yeah, looks like he's uh wants to go in the main here. Pull the Zerg apart. He may have enough if he can unload the Medivacs against these Lings, but the Banelings are going to crash this party. He'll need to pick up here. But Corruptors are in the way, so the Medivacs aren't going to be able to do this forever. And this is Dark that we know and love. Getting the Corruptors in, over the Muters against that Medivac count. Such a tanky unit. Yeah, and already tank production has begun. Uh, it is the weakness of Corruptors. Mulas can pick them off, Corruptors can't. The Corruptors have been spotted here by Maru. He's going to leave some bio here in the main to die. They do get a Corruptor at mm. least on the retreat. The, the, you remember the, the, the strategy I said for Maru wanting to do is to hold the Zelnoga tower and keep the Dark back? Look at the creep spread. It's unbelievably good. Dark is just looking incredible. There's a reason he's two maps up. That said, though, Maru has really not made too many mistakes in this series. He's looking a lot more solid in the third game. He's got to get out there to get rid of this creep yeah. spread. And the engagements from Dark are going to start to be in the center of the map where he can come from many different angles compared to if it was Maru keeping Dark in that position. Round is third, round is fourth. That's right. Maru actually has quite a bank here. Just now spinning it, getting that Marines eight at a piece coming out with a 2 2 okay. up finish. Dark is preparing for the mo big movement out with 2 2 upgrades that Mara's going to go for. In a moment, Mara's going to push out, and if Dark wins this fight convincingly, we could be saying goodbye to this Terran. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there for Mara. He's earned them too. This has to be disappointed with that. Mara has to be so very, very careful when he moves on to creep very shortly. So much creep to deal with as well, and he has to move on to the creep. It, it, the, the spread is so wide, there's not really any avenue of attack for him. He has to fight it. Hit the engagements that he needs to pick are uh, almost at where his fourth would be. We've got the Corruptors hanging around the side, looking for any Medivacs that they can pick off. Perhaps catching a drop, which would be sweet for Dark. Fourth oh. command center on the way, and if, if Maru doesn't attack, Dark has already put the infestation pit down. He can go up towards Hive. He could play in uh, Swarm Host. He uh, does have that plus two attack on the way as well. He's flying past about nine overlords here as he tries to drop and get some mineral damage. The Corruptors are on the hunt. Yeah. Just Marines in this medevac. This and, isn't going to do yeah. anything. Completely ineffective, and he's actually got another dropship going over creep on the left, so Dark, if he's aware of that, can shut it down just as easily. Well, Most of his units. Yeah, the Corruptors are on the hunt. They did spot that. Maru hasn't moved out into the uh, the pit of doom, which is all these Zergling, Banelings, Roaches, and Corruptors. He's sitting back, he's waiting, he's playing it patiently. I think he identified that if he moved out, he'd be in a bit of trouble, but he's taking this opportunity with the drops at the back to clear some of this creep. And there's a lot of Banelings here, Apollo, and then a lot of oh, creep. He's actually stimming, he's still on creep. Oh, a big connection, the Banelings taking out a lot of bio. And Maru, oh, he's already in trouble, and he hasn't even made it onto the creep very deep at all yet. I mean, he's, he's just bunkered down. He scans, he sees the hive, so he knows his opponent's moving to the next stage of this game, but he's hiding behind command centers. He's taking his fourth. He knows that this flood of Zerg is huge. He's got a very big concave with siege tanks to help as well. Can Maru hold here? A big push from Dark. The Banelings connecting with the siege tanks. They go down. A little bit of one of the siege tanks on the top. Oh my god, Dark's actually doing a lot of damage here. The Metamax are going down as well. The Roach is still alive from the early game. And Maru already looks like he's in dire straits upon him. Yeah, Planetary Forge is going to finish up to help fortify this area, but there's a lot of more units on the way. Corruptors chasing down Medivacs. Maru is dropping down to 115 supply, despite having two command centers to help funnel and filter these units through. The tanks could do maximum damage. He's been hit before his 3-3 ready. And now we see the flood of Zerglings streaming through. Dark is looking to move to the semis with this attack. He is, and he's through. The wall is down. The bunker is not going to be enough. Dark is pushing through. The Corruptors have cut that Manavac countdown to two. The Banelings are coming through as well. Maru just is trying to hold the desperation holding from Maru. He has to evacuate the third. The yeah. Banelings are rolling through. He has to hold this base. He's moving in towards the Banelings. He doesn't want to lose this command center, so he's got to lift it up. But he must hold this position. It is so important. Oh, man. 
How does Maru hold? He's broke. He's one out of minerals. Dark is one. He's 40 supply up. He's got a lot of money to remake as well. The links are in the wrapping around the tanks. The bio is enough to clean this up. He's going to hold on for now. Great hold by Maru. And now he needs to be able to rebuild this third. He lost the command sense for all of that to the corruptors as he lifted it. But he does have 3 3. Excellent attack by Dark before 3 3 was done, or at least it will be very, very shortly here. But he's taken a big hit to his economy. Maru is bleeding out resources at this point compared to Dark, who's on five bases. He's got 3 3 on the way. He's got Adrenal Glands. He's got the Ultralis Cavern coming into play too. And Dark is going to sit back, chill out, say, I have hurt your income so bad that I'm going to build up to 200 supply and then I'm going to go again and I am ripping this tournament life away from you and I'm taking it myself and I am going to the semis, not you. He is wearing the daddy pants. That is absolutely 100% sure in this current game. Looking to get a 3-0 against Maru, but Maru not dead yet. He's looking like he, I mean, he's obviously yep. in a huge spot of bother, but not dead is the important part. Four, be a miracle six, comeback here for Ultralis Cam. are on the way. Oh my Maru God. mustn't overextend. He's got to be so very careful. Somehow get a couple of drops into play, but it's very difficult with Corruptors. I think the best way to do this is to sit back and really send one drop at most here because you need every single unit you can get. He's lost a lot of medevacs all through this game. Another run by with the Zerglings. Is there an nice Maru wall. Pullback? Yeah, just plugging it in time. Nice play from Maru. The Corruptors shutting down the medevac count. What's his medevac count here? He's at five with yep. 53 of the Marines. The question comes now. Can Maru hold on versus the Ultralis, which are going to be fully upgraded very, very shortly? He is going to be able to fight off Creek when Dark charges through. His Marauder, his Marauder's a 3-3, three, three. he has 12. Yeah. And it looks like Maru's trying to take this high ground area so that maybe he can take another expansion to this right-hand side. But the Ultras are ready, and the upgrades are almost complete. This is the ultimate death force here for Dark. I mean, if he had Infestors, that is the ultimate All death right. force. But this is still pretty damn scary. Here we go. Ten seconds left on these upgrades. He's going to go in to start the fight just before they complete. Maru must come back to defend, but will he be able to hold on? That's the big question here. Maru... Deals with the Bailings very effectively here. And the Ultralis are coming in for the big hugs. The deadly hugs. The Bio spins back onto the high ground. And the tank's helping out a little bit. They're just on siege now. A big connection with the Bailing on the Bio. And Maru is actually doing pretty good here so far. Very good hold here from Maru. He's taking the fight on the high ground. He's bringing down these Ultralis. They're trying to get close, but Maru is microing back. And he is going to defeat all of the Ultralis here. Fantastic fight by Maru. Keeps himself alive for now. These units are very hurt. The Zerglings are coming in, flooding from Dark to deal with them. No Medivax to help them out. The Queens are here to, 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 to transfuse the Ultras, which are all no dead. No Medivax. He has to run back and retreat to the Planetary Fortress for assistance. These Corruptors have been incredible for Dark all game long, taking out the Medivax of Maru. A dismal count, which means that every stim is so important for Maru. He's doing damage to his own units while Dark's fighting into them. And he holds on again. Fantastic wow. play for Maru. But you have to highlight one aspect here, Maynard, is that Maru still isn't matching with the economy and he just gets to tap out. He's done, done. He's done seemingly the impossible here with a 3-0 over, over Maru. Oh my God, Zerg fans rejoice. We're gonna have Dark in the semi-finals. Dark reached his first round of eight at this tournament and now he's moved on to the semi-finals. An excellent performance from Dark. He just 3-0'd Maru. Guys, what a cheap, what a feat here from this incredible SKT1 Zerg. Maru is smiling. I don't know how, but he's managing here. And make some noise for this guy. SKT1's Dark, such a well-deserved victory. No one can argue that, Apollo. He banks himself $7,000 a minimum. And also 550 WCS points. And now plays in the next couple of hours for a chance to play in the grand finals of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. He makes it to the semis, which will be played out today. A huge moment for this young player. We've got a lot of best of fives here today. That's two out of the six that we're going to be casting here today. So much StarCraft still to come. And this means that Dark is going to be going on to face Trap in the semis. Yeah, a massive, massive moment there. It's going to be a great game that we played out in a little bit later on. Once we finish up with the quarterfinals, our next quarterfinal match here on the stage is going to be CJ Hero versus CJ Byung. A massive game there as well. Looking forward to that. But a huge congratulations to Dark. He is, and let's get an interview with our Victor SKT1 Dark with Lil Susie on the stage. All right, thank you guys. Hear it for Dark! Dark, 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 Dark. <laughs> 
Now, Dark, you are the last Zerg remaining. And there's a lot of Zerg fans out there. I think I feel it in you guys, okay? Do you feel any pressure that you need to represent this race? He said, actually, I don't feel I don't feel like burdened or anything by being the last Zerg. I know I'm the last one left. In fact, I think it's better because I'm kind of getting more spotlight from all of this. Okay. Okay, well, to make it here, you have beat out Tasia, who is obviously a powerhouse Terran. And then you just took down Maru 3-0. Okay. I was talking to Snoot earlier, and he was like, I don't know how this man does it. I, can you ask him my secret? So Snoot wants to know, what is your secret in ZVT? Because I, I think he needs a bit of help. Uh, 어, 영상도 좀 힘들 거라 생각했는데 생각보다 빌드를 잘 짜와가지고 이긴 것 같아요. 딱히 비밀 같은 건 없는데 제가 오히려 스누트 선수 걸 보고 배우고 있는데 <웃음> 저한테 물어보시니까 좀 당황스럽네요. He said, um, actually, Terran was pretty hard for me too. Uh, in fact, when he came in, he thought he was going to lose to Tasia. And he goes, I can't believe Snoot would ask that because I actually watch Snoot's games to learn something. So, so this is kind of strange here. <웃음> All right, well, speaking of Terran, since we saw how easily he ripped through that, your next opponent is Trap, who is a Protoss. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but he went through five amazing Protoss to even get here in the Korea qualifiers. I mean, names like Parting, SOS, like these guys, right? So which one's easier for you? Zerg versus Protoss or Zerg versus Terran? Mm, 지금 조성우 선수가 저랑 하잖아요. 근데 명훈이 형이 올라오면 어떻게 하나 고민하고 있었는데 조성우 선수가 오셔가지고 다행인 것 같아요. He was like, uh, definitely protest is easier. Um, you know, you saw my you saw my results. I made it through qualifications, and um, actually, he was really worried that fantasy might make it instead. And he was like, I am so glad that I'm going to be playing as trap instead of fantasy. All right, then you seem to be very confident. If you win it all, do you have a ceremony prepared for everyone? 어, 세레모니 아직까지 생각하지 않았는데 오늘 4강에서 이기면 생각해 놓고 결승에서 이기고 나서 하겠습니다. Okay, he says I haven't thought of one yet, but if I win today and I make it to the semis, then I'm definitely going to prepare one and I promise if I win, I will do a ceremony for all of you guys. Okay? So you heard it here. He's got he's if he wins this we're going to expect something really awesome from you, okay? And uh, Snoot, back to you, Mr. Inspiration for this guy. <laughs> Thank you so much, little Susie. Absolutely <laughs> amazing CVT there from Dark. I'm just in awe. This was some quality play from Dark. Amazing creep spread, amazing macro, amazing injects. The engagements were top-notch. He attacked in places where other Zergs would not have made this work. Absolutely amazing. Excuse me for that. Ah, no, actually, I don't even need to be here anymore. I'm just going to watch and uh, take I my was break hoping, now. I was hoping Snoot would throw to himself to start off the conversation. <laughs> well, first of all, let's start off with Snoot. Snoot. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, amazing. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about his path here. It's very difficult going through the Korean qualifier, very impressive, but the road wasn't loaded through Terrans that he had to go through. It was actually Protosses. So I think uh, Dark's in a pretty positive mindset. He said that he wasn't even sure you can get past Asia, your teammate, and now he's here. What a credible journey from this guy. Although a lot of fans who've been watching Korea for some time also say that, you know, we should, they aren't surprised. Dark's been showing incredible play over the past recent times, and, you know, to them, they're not really shocked whatsoever. I mean, uh, Kev, what do you think about the overall series and implications? I mean, you okay. were picking Maru, but we didn't expect Dark yeah. to win 3-0. Uh, I'm still Maru. surprised, even though I do watch a lot of Pro League myself as well, and I know that he's very good, but I'm surprised that he's able to display these mechanics in, in games like he's going up against Asia and Maru in the biggest stage possible, pretty much, or one of the biggest stages around the world. Like, you know, doing it in a random best of one against a player that he's clearly better at, and it's, I think it's often easy to look very convincing as a Zerg, but he's playing against guys that are 
constantly trying to deny every single good thing that Dark is supposed to do. And he's still doing it. He's still always renewing those crypto modes. Yeah. His creep goes so far left that like the secret drops are not secret anymore. Not because of overlords, because of creep. And Maru is probably <laughs> flying over creep there. It's like, what is creep doing over here? We're never going to fight here, Dark. Like that's just unnecessary. So uh, I'm pretty blown away. I do think like it definitely snowballed a little bit, you know, game number one, if he does spot that Nidus network, then maybe we have a different series, you know, because it's not going to work. If he gets cancelled once or twice, I don't think that it's going to work, and then I think Maru can go ahead and win game number one. Game number two, I think Maru was still a little tilted as he lost to Reaper early on, but yeah. he was setting himself up in a pretty good uh, position, but Dark is kind of like life in that way that he did find a way, you know, he was counter-attacking, he made stuff happen, and I'm very impressed, especially just by the engagement like Snoot said, like, you know, we're going to go over the same thing over and over again, but that's how impressive it was. It was not something secret, it was just really good mechanics. Yeah, building off of Kevin's point, I really like the evolution of the player in that series too, like everything that he talked about is correct, but even little things like Maru's aggression got exposed. He never made a bunker or left Marines inside of like a third. Muta's getting inside the natural, in that game number two, which was the closest game of the series, I felt, uh, I, although the end of game three was fairly close, kind of, in, in a way. Anyways, I digress. Those are like corners that are being cut by Maru so that he can keep the aggression out there. And Terran players that aggro so hard, yeah. it's really hard because when the Zerg's constantly defending, it takes like one cluster of Banelings going up against a Marauder or something like that, and all of a sudden they're dead. We've seen that so much in this tournament itself. But he just continuously found those holes and, and got in there. And, and again, the evolution, I love it. Game three, he goes for what looked like a 1-1 one -one timing, kind of an all-in Roach Baneling. Saw that it got scouted, saw that uh, Maru seemed to be in position to kind of deflect it and said, okay, I won't. I'm going to back up and do kind of the mid-game variation. Violet used to do it all the time where you max out on Roach Baneling and just go in with a swarm. And that kind of, that, that development on the fly decision making, it's not super uncommon, but it's just amazing to see at this stage against Maru in the World Championship. He's able to execute on that level right. at a foreigner tournament, something again that Dark is a little bit in the... Oh, I almost said it. Uh, he's not as common with. Like, we've, we've seen amazing pro league performances from him. He's been the ace a few times in huge matches, and that's where he's really made his name. But kind of what I was talking about is we haven't seen him outside of that doing it on this kind of stage, and yet here he is delivering. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you for the analysis. Thank you for holding back on that pun, by the way. I'm trying. I can't do too many Self control. Jokes. Yeah. yeah. Everything in moderation. Now, actually, we have a, let's go back to game number two, too, Snoot. Uh, there was a moment that you were saying, and I think the cast was properly identified, too. I mean, Apollo was saying he can't emphasize enough how big that counterattack was. But uh, let's go ahead and review it because there's a lot of technical things aspect to it as well. Let's so, emphasize it enough. Yeah, let's emphasize it enough for Apollo. Yeah, so, so this is a very <laughs> traditional situation to be in a Zerg on Vani Research Station. It's all about that siege at the fourth base. Uh, but here we see the most important move from Dark, sectioning off this huge group of links to intercept reinforcements. And I cannot state how important this was because if we looked at the engagements that happened a little bit before this, before this counterattack even launched, yeah. Maru was taking some real good trades. He was splitting like a madman. Yep. He was walking up the cliff on the left-hand side here. And he was taking amazing trades. But then Dark de uh, finally decided to counterattack, yeah. And from there, it was just downhill for Maru. And he diversified his attention. That's, that's one of the biggest parts I find. When Maru can look at that fourth base siege and, and he has to go home. do those splits and micro, mm. he was winning, as Snoop said. But because he had to go home and be like, oh, god, my SCVs are under attack. I need to get what little units I have, what paltry defenses I have over there, yeah. all of a sudden he just picked up his army at the fourth base and got out of there. Not necessarily because he's about to lose a fight. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, but because he couldn't risk it. It only takes a few banelings wandering in and all of a sudden he loses the game. I think this was really cool, the middle list follow up because for the first time Maru actually had to worry about something that's in his main and obviously this was well done. But what I really like is then he hides the middle list in the corner of the left bottom side of the map and instead of like sending the reinforcements somewhere, he waited until he had five or six and he sent them into the natural again. Yeah. Because now Maru thinks like, ah, you know, I'm fighting as Muras. They are trapped over here, and he's like, ha, ha, no, I have a few more. Like, I thought yeah, I was really loving cool. this little second group of Muras. Yep. It's not something we see every day. Oh. It's just a very smart move from Dark. It's a cool adaptation as well, because a lot of people, again, th when they're moving and playing in such an intense game, their thought process is, no, all my Muras need to be together. Yeah. That's that's just what they think. We see this, and of course, on the analyst desk, we can be like, oh, it's a pretty simple move. That's really cool. I really like that. But <laughs> in a game, that's incredible that he had that thought process to do that. And yeah. again, knowing Maru well enough to know, because a lot of times, too, when Muta show up, when they get them out of there, as Kevin said, he knew that where they were, but you still build a missile turret or two, because now you're like, oh, there's Mutas out here, and they're being aggressive. Nope, Maru's not that kind of guy. He will cut every corner that he can, if he can, to be as aggressive as he possibly can. I also want to talk a little bit about the map choice again. Uh, it's still, you know, it still surprised me a little bit that 
Vani was chosen as the second map here, and uh, it turned out to be the worst case scenario for Maru. And uh, when we think about it, the fourth map was Catalina, Catalina. and yes, the fifth yeah. map Inferno Pools, yeah. which is really good for Terran. So we didn't get to see any of the traditionally Terran favored maps, I would say. Well, Vani isn't exactly super Zerg favored, mm. but. I would still but say I, that I, Catalina statistically is more okay. turn yeah. favored than and like Vani you, is. And like you said, yesterday we saw Dark Shine on Vani Research Station. Precisely. That was one hell of a game. Like you he saw just Dark showed Shine? That. I'm sorry. <laughs> In you the were dark. one hour away from a Dark <laughs> Shine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, funny. <laughs> Anyways, he yeah. did well yesterday. Yeah. So I agree with Snoot. I'm surprised as well. I still do not think that uh, Maru ever expected to lose Overgrove. And I also don't think he had to if he saw it, which on the minimap he technically saw it, but he probably thought, ah, it's just an overlord. It's never just an overlord, Snoot. Uh, <laughs> the tough thing, too, is Dark was the, Dark was the one that did this earlier, right? In, in the yeah. first series? And I think it was the first game. Didn't he do the Nidus Road? No, that was so long. No, no, that, that was so long. Was so long. Was so long. I think, I mean, so even many that game games. was confusing because it was in Mara's vision. And it just, like, I think, Kevin, you were right yeah. saying he felt tilted with the game afterwards, losing the Reaper. It looked like he was pretty exasperated throughout the rest yeah, of the of series course. from that point on. It was like from that... I, I was really hoping for Maru to be able to make a comeback and make a closer series, but again, Dark takes it 3-0. Do we have any final thoughts on that series before we start previewing what's going on next? Just super impressive, and his play has been impeccable through both series, and he says Protoss is easier. So it, it's like... <laughs> it's, it, I mean, and Trap's been playing amazingly well, too, so it's really nice to see this, this uh, convergence of two players that are playing on fire like this. Two very... Uh, well, not very, I guess. Again, a lot of the hardcore fans know that Dark has been one of the absolute best Zergs on the planet. I just feel like the, the larger audience right now is being introduced to this Zerg that's, that's for them seemingly coming out of nowhere. And it's really cool to see. Him versus Trap, I, I don't think it'll be a 3-0 either way. I, I hope that's going to be a close series. You know what In that fact, means. Trap has to play 3-2 either way. It yeah. can't be. That's what he does, right? That's actually true. Uh, maybe uh, Trap will finally be able to break that cycle against uh, game, going to game number five. But interestingly enough, that also means, because Jeff, you asked for it, you said no TBT in the finals. Yeah. That means there's no TBT. It's going to be Protoss or Zerg going the distance. And once again, even though Zerg uh, has time and time again been one of the races, sometimes in the very beginning of StarCraft, <laughs> underrepresented, making a deep run again. So really cool stuff yeah. that we get to see that coming through. And that wraps up our second series of the quarterfinals. We have another one coming up with CJ Hero versus CJ Byung. There's a team kill there. There's a lot of things on the line for the King of IEM versus the King of Mech, according to Snoot. <laughs> and of course, uh, if you can keep up with the track, as we are doing full coverage here with the Score Esports app on Android and iOS. And I'm sure if we didn't emphasize enough and Apollo didn't emphasize enough, I'm sure there's going to be an article detailing about that series between those guys. You put them on the line like that? Well, I mean, they're going to talk about the round of eight, will they? All right. It's their job. They're the full coverage partner of IEM. It's going to happen. If they not, will. I just gave another poor writer another thing to do. That's right. Nice so job. It's going to be happening. TheScoreEsports.com on Android and iOS. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more action and more StarCraft II here from Katowice, Poland. Stay tuned. <laughs> 